I'm Nolan Scaife. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about our work in detecting credit card skimmers. Uh, but before I get into the technical details of that, I'd like to tell you a little bit of a story. So we were in New York, uh, and I'll get back to this uh, story again later in the presentation, but we were on a trip to New York City. We were taking in some sites and eating some pizza. And uh, we get to the airport, and my advisor gets a call from his bank. Hey, I'm sorry? I have a lapel mic on. <laughs> Try that. Is that better? I don't know. OK, all right. Is this better? OK, we'll just hold it. OK, so we're at the airport. My advisor gets a, a phone call. Are you at the Nike store buying $400 in shoes? Shoes? We're at the airport. So I'm sure most of you have a similar story to this. you know. And we're tired of getting ripped off, frankly, so we decided to do something about it. Uh, attackers are actually after your card data, which is mostly what's printed on the front of the card, but it's also available on the stripe and the chip. And so when we looked at this problem, we found that criminals are getting the devices, or sorry, getting the card data off devices uh, called skimmers. And so in this problem, or in this paper, we tackle the problem of card skimmers. And the goal of a card skimmer is simply to copy enough data off of your card to be able to make a fraudulent transaction. This is even possible with EMV. And what you can do with this card data is you can create counterfeit cards. You can make, uh, make reasonable looking clones, you can take them into the store, and you can buy stuff with them. Now, if you're interested on how to detect the counterfeit cards, uh, I did a talk at Oakland in May, uh, and you can see that on YouTube. And this is an entire ecosystem uh, of payment systems work, and this paper is just about detecting skimmers. And my larger research agenda focuses on the entire ecosystem. So as a consumer, we looked for advice on how to avoid skimmers, and we found five nonspecific tips. You know, and in fact, when you look at these, it's kind of clear why they don't work. And it's not clear what a uh, skimmer should look like or feel like, what should happen when you try and pull it off. Uh, it's not clear if skimmers use Bluetooth. Uh, and, and the last one, use cash, I thought was the most interesting, because I need a card to get cash. Uh, and uh, also, this kind of sidesteps the problem in, in, uh, in totality, you know, to go to a cashless society to avoid skimming. So, you know, news articles typically focus on just one or two skimmers at a time. Hey, we found one over here. We found one at this store. And we asked, how can we hope to solve this problem if we can't measure it? So we uh, partnered with the NYPD, who gave us uh, their BOLO data set. And what a BOLO is, is it's like a, it's a memo uh, to other officers or other departments to let them know what's been found in the wild so that they can, uh, if they see another one, they can report it back to the, the person who found the original one. They can link them together. And what these represent are unique skimmers that were found in the wild over a 16-month period in New York City. Now, this data set has 35 unique skimmers in it. And a main contribution of our work is that we created a taxonomy of these devices, put them into five categories based on uh, where they're installed and what kind of access is needed to put them in. Now, I want to uh, draw your attention to overlay and deep insert skimmers. We're going to be talking quite a bit about these. These account for 69% of all of the skimmers found in New York City. Now, many hundreds of copies of these devices were found. Uh, so, you know, when I say that there's 35 skimmers, that sounds low, but every time they found one, if, there, if it already existed, there wasn't an additional bolo. Overlay skimmers, now you're probably familiar with this if you've been told to pull on a card skimmer before, for, uh, uh, if you've been told to pull on a card reader before, especially at uh, like a gas station. Uh, these are placed onto the card slot. They're custom manufactured to look like the real thing. They have an additional read head and decoding hardware. And uh, most of them require the attacker to come back and pull it back off and get the data off of it. They don't have Bluetooth. They don't have uh, any kind of wireless communication capability. They simply stick them on there. They collect the card data. They come back and they pick it up and they go dump it. Then they move the skimmer to another location. And in the case of uh, point of sale overlays, you know, these can actually uh, mimic the entire unit. So you can put your pen in, you can swipe your card, and they're getting all the data in one stop. Now, one thing that was interesting about this was when we talked to uh, officers about this, they said, well, they use really strong 
double-sided tape on the back of these uh, or clips to hold it onto the reader. So when you go up and you pull on it, it doesn't come off. In fact, in a lot of cases, it doesn't even wiggle. Um, they use a, uh, a knife or some sort of pry tool to pull them off. Uh, so when we go back to our advice here, uh, it's not likely that pulling on the card reader is going to get you a skimmer. The second category is deep insert skimmers. Now these are custom machined parts, uh, and I can't emphasize this enough, these are custom machined for the target payment terminal. So every one of these looks different. Um, and the reason for that is they take them to the ATM uh, and they stick it into the card slot, uh, not unlike trying to get your uh, bag into the overhead bin in a, in a small airplane, but they, they jam it in there and they press it down with a small tool. And it sits in there as a battery, it has a readhead, it has decoding hardware, and it collects card data. Later they come back and they use the same tool to pop it up and pull it out of the card slot. In fact, these are actually so hard to remove without the tool that the police will just remove the entire uh, card reader unit uh, rather than just pulling the, uh, the skim around. Now these are nearly impossible to see when installed. You may be asking, well, I have, a, I have a pen on my card, right? How are they getting this pen? Well, it's really the same kind of attack. They use a, uh, an overlay pen pad. They'll put it, on top of the, uh, put it on top of the existing pen pad. In fact, this one was made to look weathered so it looked like it belonged. Or they'll use a camera, and they're very crafty with where they put these cameras. In fact, uh, the picture here on the left is a... Uh, it's a light assembly from an ATM. They'll go and they'll steal these, drill a hole, put a camera in it, and then go back and install it back into the ATM. Now, it's really hard to see these, especially when the light is shining into your face. But we've also seen where they'll drill out the middle of the security bolt right next to it and put the camera in there. Very crafty. The other two pictures are, at, 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 if you've ever used an ATM, where you put your hand under a plastic sheath so that someone can't see where you're putting, or, you know, what your pen is, they'll put the camera in that. So when you put your hand in and you think it's being shielded, you're actually putting your hand right in front of the camera and typing your pen. Now, what we found that was really curious was that this is what the police look for first. So when they, we went around with the, uh, with an officer and he would look for the cameras first because even though these are so hard to spot, I don't know that I would see this, it's still easier than trying to find the skimmer. And so looking for signs of a skimmer is not going to work. Next, if you think EMV solves this problem, there's a lot of research, a lot of great research on the problems with EMV. This is actually kind of interesting. These are flexible boards. Uh, that they stick into the EMV slot such that when you put your card in, this device acts as a man in the middle between your card and the payment terminal. So these attacks exist also for EMV cards. So this is not likely to avoid a skimmer. And finally, quickly, uh, we have wiretap skimmers that are installed between the payment terminal and whatever the next upstream device is. Uh, this is indicative of some other vulnerability, like no encryption, uh, something like that, if they're able to do this. And finally, internal skimmers. These are devices that sit in line between the card reader uh, and whatever the next hop is, uh, like a motherboard. Uh, these are typically found in gas stations uh, because opening the device and installing something inside of it is a lot easier on a gas station pump than a ATM. Now these most frequently have wireless data retrieval. In fact, if you're familiar with uh, uh, smartphone apps that will let you detect skimmers via Bluetooth, this is what they're looking for. But of the 35 devices that the, NY the 35 unique devices that the NYPD saw, only seven of them had Bluetooth capabilities. So the rest couldn't even be detected with an app. So this might work on a skimmer here and there, but not as a whole. And you may be wondering how people don't get caught installing these. 
This is real footage from a real skimmer. Uh, this person has it in a shirt pocket or a bag. They walk in, and within just a couple of seconds, it's stuck on. So after looking at the NYP, uh, NYPD bolos and inspecting a variety of different card readers, we decided to look at overlay and deep insert skimmers more closely because this represented the majority of what the NYPD is seeing. And we found three properties common among all of these skimmers. First, every device we looked, like, looked at has a mechanism for pushing the card into the head. You know, this makes sense. Magnetic field strength on these cards drops off exponentially with distance. And both reader manufacturers and sellers of this have data sheets that say, you will have a bad time if you don't touch the card when it's reading it. Second, surface material. We examined 17 heads. All of them had a metallic conductive head. And this again makes sense because creating a substantial enough voltage to read the card requires low resistance. It makes sense that these are metal. And third, size. To keep skimmers small, these attackers need the smallest magnetic read heads available. And every head we looked at had 1.5 millimeters of contact on the card. We even looked at sites that sell multi-hundred dollar read heads. I mean, these things are very, very small, and they still contact the card on 1.5 millimeters of space. So in the end, these are small, they're metal, and they touch the card. Now, this is, uh, to illustrate this, this is actually the, the skimmer that I showed you the installation footage from. Uh, and if you look at the, if you look at the image uh, that's highlighted in the red circle, you can see uh, the head there, you can see the spring that pushes the card into the reed head, and you can see the 1.5 millimeters of contact. And if you notice the pinhole camera in the top left-hand corner, that actually peeks through a one millimeter hole, and that is what captures the pin footage that you saw just a second ago. So it turns out that the most common way to pull this attack off is to add an additional read it. Uh, that's exactly what overlay and deep insert skimmers do. Such that when you put your card into the slot, the skimmer reads the card and the legitimate reader reads the card. So our hypothesis, our hypothesis is that overlay and deep insert skimmers, we can detect these if we can count the number of read heads and then alert. So in December 2016, we started making our first prototype. And uh, what we did, this is an interesting process, we needed high precision to be able to catch these uh, uh, read, read heads because they're very close together. And so what we did was we spray painted some copper board, burned off the mask with a, uh, a laser etcher, and then uh, did a chemical bath to actually make it a PCB. And to test it, we built a prototype skimmer in a ballistic or gator orange. Uh, and we put it onto a real OEM gas pump part. Uh, this actually internally just houses a square reader. And so after several iterations, we came to the most successful design we had. And this is where the traces are positioned in multiple directions over where the ISO standard uh, tracks are. So in other words, this is where the data is going to be. So this is where the skimmers are going to try to read. And when they try to read that, they're going to pass over this. And so as the read head passes over it, it creates, a, it creates a circuit. Now, what this looks like on our end is that we can count the number of voltage spikes uh, as the card is, is put into the, into the card slot. We, uh, this brief voltage spike actually occurs every time a head passes over the card. So in this case, this is a dip reader. So you put your card in and you take it out. So you see it twice on a legitimate one. You see it four times if there's a skimmer present. And once we were confident that the device worked every time on our test readers, we developed an enclosed prototype, had the PCBs professionally printed. I call it the Skim Reaper. And I have one here uh, with me. 
If you would like to see it or see a demo, uh, you can see me or any one of the co-authors. We have uh, Reaper devices to play with. And so we flew out to New York City to test it. And they gave us access to 10 skimmers we'd never seen, eight overlay skimmers and two deep insert skimmers. We were able to test it five times on each one of these skimmers with a 100% success rate. Now, you may be thinking, well, what if I could make the head non-conductive? After all, if you've ever had a worn credit card, you might have put scotch tape on it or uh, put it in a plastic bag and tried to read it. And actually, that does work. Um, but the problem here is, is that the skimmers have very, very small read heads. Uh, if you'll recall, I mean, these things have to be so small that they can stick onto the front of another unit. And that actually makes them far less sensitive than what you would find at your local grocery store. So what we did was we instrumented one of these skimmers uh, and we put tape on it and we tried to read a real credit card uh, 50 times and we weren't able to do it. And you can see here how the tape attenuates that signal. I mean, this was not, um, this was not possible to read this card. The data was just too damaged. So in summary, and skimmers remain a major threat. And what we were able to do uh, was collect a data set from the NYPD uh, and look at these bolos and discover what the, three, uh, what the three common characteristics were of these skimmers. We built a card, uh, and then we went back out to New York City and tested it on real skimmers. And a final note on real-world impact. In the wake of this, we've been contacted by so many law enforcement agencies across the country that we, we have to put them on a wait list because we can't, we can't make them uh, fast enough. But today, we have Reapers uh, deployed in seven agencies across five states. And in fact, we got two more requests yesterday, so this map isn't even uh, current anymore. Uh, and we found that uh, the NYPD contacted us. Uh, they've reported finding one skimmer in the wild and the results from the Reaper being used in that criminal investigation. So I'd like to thank you for coming to my talk, uh, and I'd like to really thank the NYPD for spending multiple days with us and letting us do a ride along to look for skimmers with them. Uh, thank you, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Yeah, so the question was, uh, let me make sure I got it. Uh, have we checked to see if we can detect EMV shimmers? Uh, we have not, uh, but stay tuned. Hi, uh, what's the, do you know what the typical lifetime of one of these skimmers in the field is? Uh, yeah, so uh, these skimmers actually have, uh, they have batteries in them. In fact, they're often wired poorly in a way that would make them explode. Uh, they use uh, uh, like Nokia phone batteries. They last about two to three days in the field, and that's why, you know, a lot of them don't have Bluetooth, uh, because you'd have to come back and pick it up nearly every day. Right, so it seems like the economics of this are that they're really running on the edge of having it being economical to deploy these skimmers, right? I mean, you know, the value of how many credit cards do they capture, what can you monetize with them. Sure. So if you can make them, I mean, it seems like what you're doing is essentially making it more expensive for the attacker, right? Um, because they have to, in, you know, change to a technology that's going to be less sure. susceptible yeah. to this. Yeah. And, you know, uh, do you have a sense of, you know, where in this arms race we go next? Well, we think that, you know, there's a part of the skimming vulnerability, especially with the Skim Reaper, is that, you know, the skimmer is there for some time uh, before someone comes along uh, with, a, with a Reaper and uses it. And that's why and we think it's uh, a great uh, consumer product to have out there. Um, you know, the challenge for us is... Um, The challenge for us is in making them fast enough and cheap enough to get them out there. And honestly, uh, like the skimmer that I showed you in the installation video, that skimmer was only there for maybe 35 minutes, because uh, we have the whole footage from the card before someone came along and used it. Uh, so you know, 
tuning down the amount of time that it takes to detect these is really critical to getting rid of them. Well, we we think that they're we think that these are centrally produced, and the reason why we think that obviously I don't know anybody that makes skimmers. Um, the uh, uh, the these boards and things that they have in these cards almost always look the same. Uh, in fact, uh, we saw we've looked at a bunch of, uh, for example. Um, a gas pump readers, and they all have a model number on them. And the model number is the same, or the same font in the same location. And so we have a reason to believe that these are centrally, uh, centrally made and then dispersed out uh, to folks to go put them on. Hi, so because of time limitation, so we can take the questions offline. And now let's welcome, let's thank Nolan again.